Welcome to Let's Talk Geek, episode 59. In the show, the reboot, 500 gigabits per second fiber, and how to call Batman. Thank you for listening. Welcome to Let's Talk Geek, episode 59, uh, The Restart. Um, hey, that's a good title. <laughs> <laughs> with us today, we have Stuart Allen. How's it? You can find him uh, at, at Stu underscore ZA. What's your blog again? Uh, StuartAllen.org. Yep. Cool. I know you're going to be giving a talk, I think, on something. You oh, no, that's work. Work oh, related. Okay. No, right, no, no, it's nothing, nothing important. It's just work. Uh, cool. But yes, I've got to give a stupid talk. <laughs> um, and then we have uh, Jan Vermeulen from My Broadband. Uh, you should all know the uh, address for that. If not, type into Google. It will pop up right at the top. Staff writer. Yes. <laughs> I wonder what happens if you Google staff writer. Just uh, quickly, what is his um, handle on Twitter? Jan V. Z. A. Uh, that well beer done. helped. Well Excellent. Done. You put me on the spot there. I was going to come to you. And it's that <laughs> pressure thing. So your brain just goes blank. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the person on my right... Uh, Jan Alps. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Tim. How are you? Be on yourself. Oh, fine. And you thank can you. Find him at blog. Who else? Dot zero zero. Who hyphen else? Dot zero zero. Or on Twitter at Johan underscore else. Or just watch the rest of our shows. I mean, I'm here two nights a week, so mm. find us. Yeah. And myself, Tim Hawk. Uh, Tim underscore Hawk. And with us mixing tonight, we have the mixer, the person who shall not be named. Go, go, go check out their profile pics if you want us to know what they look like. It's on our last uh, show, Wiki. <coughs> All right. right. Hold on. The Wiki is at... Uh, Wiki.letstalknetwork.tv. Is there a link from the main page as yes. well? Yeah. So, yeah. Top. Wiki. So, if you're actually watching at the live stream, if you're not, follow us next time. Um, there's a Wiki link. Just don't click on it now because you're going to navigate away from the uh, live stream. Send a click. Send a click. Or control click. Yes, one of those. <laughs> 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 All right. Now that we confused Jan with that quickly, we're, we're going to uh, the first How topic. How can you send to click on the center mouse? As soon as you try and click on it, it rolls. Mouse. No, man. Come on. Do you have two mice? Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That is my problem with middle click. I, I, yes, I've got a fairly you. expensive mouse, yeah. so that's okay. I, I, the, the wheel yeah, just the doesn't. Yeah. But like some of, some of the expense, is expensive Logitech, for instance, have this mouse wheel that free wheels, yeah. right? So it, it, so it scrolls really quickly. So um, you should ooh, try and click it rolls. Yeah. Ooh, can I bitch uh, about that a little bit? Yes. <laughs> okay, it. quickly, quickly. Right, it's the MX. Yes. It's the MX's. Revolution I, or it whatever. It is freaking awesome. Okay, but I will tell you something a little bit about this. The first one that came out had a... Um, you could program the mouse at what velocity that you were scrolling the wheel that it would switch from clicking mode, from like a, a ratchet mode into freewheel mode, which was absolutely the best thing since sliced bread. Okay? Um... Then they came out with the new version, which was better, a little bit better ergonomics and, and things like that. More expensive, but they skimped on all the cool features that made the old one awesome. The new one has got a mechanical switch that you have to press, and it mechanically disengages the ratchet system, which is really, really lame. Okay, now the original one, when, it, when you... Was it a ratchet physical it, ratchet? It, it was a physical ratchet. So when you were going slowly, it would click, click, click. And as soon as you flicked it quickly, it went into freewheel mode and then freewheeled. Okay. It was the best thing ever. And, and I'm wondering why, you know, why this happens. You seem, you seem to see quite a lot of feature regression yeah. uh, in stuff. It's, it's like uh, you it's, know you know, it so they made something awesome and then they realized, oh, my word, this is costing us way more to produce. It, we can cheapen yes. it. Because that, charge the same amount, that whole make a lot of uh, more money. That whole system had a little servo motor that moved the ratchet in and out, and a whole bunch of extra electronics and everything. No, it was complicated. This is what happened with nineteen twenty by twelve hundred monitors. Yeah. Too complicated. <laughs> yeah, this is what happened with nineteen twenty by twelve hundred monitors. Is yeah. that it? It uh, nineteen twenty by ten eighty ten eighty p monitors or panels um, are just incredibly cheap to produce. Um, and that's, by the way, where 4x3 went. You can yeah. still get 4x3. You can still get 1920x1200 resolution monitors, but you're going to pay through your yes. neck for them. Yeah. So they realized that widescreen is cheaper to make. Um, y you just get more panel out of a, out of a single sheet. 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 Yeah. And, uh, and so we got told widescreen is better, and now everything's widescreen. No. Okay, I but hate I widescreen. I, miss, I want more reading space. I miss I miss no, four by three. I prefer the other Thank way. Thank you. Wide I prefer screen is wide just screen so much way better. better for what you, I you know use. what? Most cool. of your content you consume is done in wide. 
I I'm going to... Uh, pro oh, programming, pro no. I pref <laughs> way prefer widescreen for yes. programming. It, no. it's, it's all about the... the wide, hard... I will add extra screens. You know what? But you know what's nice? You could just most... Sorry. I mm. mean, go take your Vim or something and just split the screens. So you can have your headers, your header file on one side and the, the, your, your implementations on the other or... You can be, uh, that's great. And that you've got to have on wide screens then. What, what I've seen work really well, uh, you pull an old Xerox mm. Park. Uh, for, for those of you who know something about computer history, Xerox Park are the guys who gave us uh, not only the GUI interface, which Steve Jobs, I think, bought from Xerox. No, um, no copied. No, no, he, I, I'm <laughs> fairly sure he, no. he bought it in shares. Theory. He, gave, yeah. he gave Xerox shares in Apple. I'm fairly know, sure. But anyway, anyway, yeah. Yeah. anyway the, the bottom line is, is, is that, that that's where the original Macintosh's GUI ideas came from. Later on, um, uh, the ideas we used from Xerox Park were, were Ethernet and um, uh, uh, object-oriented programming, small talk. Um, anyway, so their monitor was lengthways because Xerox yes. was a copier company, right? So they thought of the A4 or the US letter size as a, as a good size for a mm. display. And so it was widescreen but upright. Sort of. Um, and um, that actually works well. If you can find a widescreen <laughs> that rotates, then you've got a lot of reading room. I've seen music playlists, for instance, work really well on that. Um, I really want a monitor like that. So if anybody knows uh, where I you can get a cheap one. monitor like that, <laughs> I, I want it. I don't have one anymore. Anyway, we're going to move on from there uh, into our first topic, which is shooting challenge cinemagraph. Um, and basically, it's a, a people who've taken videos and converted them incredibly well into GIF moving images. Taking photos. And some of them were, oh, were they actually some videos and then they took, they took clips um, and then merged it together. Okay, well, just very the, cool. The it whole is thing cool. about how they pick what's still and what keeps yeah, on moving is fun. very, very nice. It's very fun. But my question was, I mean, I didn't realize GIF was still around. Yes, yeah. Oh, I mean, was that CompuServe? That they <laughs> was originally CompuServe. Was, was it CompuServe? Yeah, yeah, that was yeah originally. it was. <coughs> and the patents expired a couple of years ago on GIF. That's why now, maybe that's why it's making a bit of a resurgence. Well, it will be great. I mean, because yeah, uh, the alternatives, and Google, well, and Google Plus as well, I think has helped GIF a lot in the last couple. What, of what, where in Google Plus are they using it? Uh, the you not look at stream recently. Everybody's posting stupid things. I'm just jumping young. them down, and <laughs> I'm yeah. still trying to wait to Google Apps accounts to be allowed into Google Plus. <laughs> <laughs> you lie. I've seen you on Google Plus. Yes, and I now actually realized because people are That's starting cool. to Check email me, I went and created another Gmail account just as a, so I can get into Google Plus, and now people are emailing me there. So I'm just going to close it down again. It's like, I, don't, I just actually created the account so I can see what this Google Plus is about. But there are rumors. We saw the little tweets about, yeah, they said it's coming, it's coming. It's, it's there like, are many things that are imminent. So um, I hope it's really going to happen. But I understand the issues. I mean, I understand why. I'd, I'd love some... That Google yeah. yes. wants to do, and they've actually now done. Oh, We're thank gonna you. We're going to jump ahead to navigation. Yes. Finally. Yes, thank finally, you. Finally, finally, finally. They've been promising it to us for about a year now. Oh, interesting. I'd, I'd missed the promise. Uh, I so thought it was promised already for the World Cup or something. I heard yes. rumors. Oh, okay. But a hey, rumor mall, really rumor mall. Yeah, so yeah. And, and this, by the way, is why people are loath to announce or, or feed rumors or anything like that. So I think Google, or well, all these companies, Google, Apple, all those guys might sort of feed a rumor so it's not from an official channel to sort of build hype around something with the hope of launching it, but there'll never be official word. Yeah. And smartphone manufacturers are doing this as well because so. there are so many factors that can mess up your launch date. Okay, so you were actually at a non-Google event where they actually showed, oh, yeah, by the way, navigation's working. It's all Samsung's things uh, today. It, it looked like the whole event was actually organized around navigation because they had a special amazing race event in which you were going to use, a, which you used the Sony Ericsson. KMF okay. was there. Um, I, I think we all follow Carl Fisher, right, on yes. Twitter. Yeah. Um, at KMF, a free plug, Carl. <laughs> um, yeah, he, lunch. He, he, he writes for ZA Droid. Um, and that was quite cool. I didn't I'd, know that. I admire the dedication yeah. uh, because it's he took leave to, to come and cover this event. That was really cool. I know when, he, when Android first came out, he said Android's going to be great, and that's when he registered the Z Android. Yeah. yeah. And, and Z Android have been doing some good stuff. Um, so, yeah. Okay, but just to come back to the event, um, yes. was there any hint on why has it taken so long? No. Because and there never I mean, will be. Okay. Because, yeah. I mean, I've now owned an Android now for two and a half, three years. And you could, from the uh, XA developer, you could actually download a hacked version of the navigation and been using it. So technically, there was no reason for it not to work. Yeah. 
And so, the navigation yeah. services work because on normal maps, you could say, give me directions yes. from point A to point B, and you could actually drive those directions. It would, you know, it, it yeah. wasn't well, the, the navigation, but the routing all worked and everything yes. like that worked. So, so Hang on, no let me understand this correctly. On XDA, you download the ROM, it worked. Not the ROM. You could actually download the APK. Okay. A, 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 a Google Maps replacement APK. Because what I was going to suggest was that maybe they needed to they needed to do some sort of conditioning on the maps in order to make it routable uh, or, or add, its, I, add I, some metadata for the voice no, prompting or anything like no that. No technical issues. There's, there's, there's some going to be some logistic or, or business. It's a business, Probably business. business yeah. issue. Yeah. And, and maybe that was, I mean, um, they are in, encroaching here on, on like highly yes. contested territory. They are encroaching here on, on what, we, uh, the, what we call the personal navigation device, P&D space. That's the Garmin's, the TomTom's, Navigoners in South Africa at the moment as well. They all have mobile apps on various platforms, yeah. iPhone and Android. And Google now is now basically doing what IE did to Netscape. Mm. If you want to, uh, this is a discussion we had in the office. It's not quite the same as what I did to Netscape because the PND is still something that's very cool to have in your car as opposed to your smartphone. Um, PND, personal navigation, well, navigation device. device. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> I've had it now twice where I'm navigating. I'm at a crucial point in the navigation and my phone rings. Yes. I've had it twice now. We actually, I had to pull over because now I don't know where the hell I'm going. No, yeah, no, actually no true. Take the call and then go on from there. And that's that's yes, I agree. You got to. And as we were saying, um, it would be, and also the live traffic that the Tom Toms and the Garmins do. Yes, I believe there was rumours that the Google, at Google would be bringing in those traffic layers. They've they've confirmed that they they are, are working on bringing in um, oh, you know other I, layers, I traffic you, you and just need transit layers. Enough people using it before you can. Actually oh, to generate that data. Yeah. yeah. No, well, true. or you do what Tom Tom's done, and Tom Tom's plugged into Traffic Net's data. And Net Star. Um, I don't know Altec who. Altec or something. Uh, Altec, yeah. Altec um, is uh, what well, Garmin, Garmin uses. uses right, and yes, Tom yeah. Tom. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna say this outright. It's highly opinionated and not something that a journalist should say. Tom Tom beats the pants off everybody in this country when it comes to live traffic. That's just Except my personal they experience. Sold, uh, they sold a whole bunch of people's live traffic in, out in Norway or um, Sweden or something like it that. It was in Holland. Yeah, it's one, well, one of the Scandinavian Look, countries. No, was it a Scandinavian country? Wasn't it Holland? It was the, uh, okay. the country of origin. I wasn't think it? Tom Tom and I'm not sure. uh, Garmin will survive. They'll they'll UK. be innovative and they'll keep bring us new personal navigation devices that 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 will be why you want still want that device. Mm. I'm feeling sorry for the rest. Wazoo. And Waze. Waze. Waze, Waze. Is, is sort of crowdsourced. Mm. It's got a bit of a different angle to I mean, it. That was the alternative on Android. If you didn't want to pay for Garmin or wanted to pay for any of the others, you could get free you know, voice navigation by using Waze. They're not going to make it. That's yeah. Sorry. So in a way, I mean, like, I, I kind of stand by what I said about the, it being anti-competitive. You, you are... You are sort of making it impossible yeah, on, for other people on to compete. On one side, though, generally they brought out the navigation on the Androids before anybody. It took ages before Garmin and all the rest of them added apps. You know what? The problem comes in, is, as Jan was saying, you've got your phone. What do you do when you take a phone call? Um, will you really stick your cell phone on your dashboard? Yeah. And I must say, with, with most we'll modern PNDs, they've got Bluetooth support. Yeah, they pull fun. in my phone book. So I use it as a Bluetooth headset. Yeah. Um, so the, the PND really becomes sort of a hub in, in the car. So it, it, can, it, it does s serve a purpose still. But I'm just hoping what, it doesn't become something you know, esoteric. You know where I see this, the, where the, the navigation is going to be useful, is you go to a strange city. Okay? Have you ever been to London? Try walking home at night to try find out where the hell you stay. Mm, that yes. is going to be useful yes. on your phone. <laughs> yeah, but you've not raised. Because when you leave for the pub and it's light, you know how to get there. Yes. Coming back is a bit of a problem. But you've raised a very important point. Google doesn't support caching. It, it does. does. Okay, so when I've climbed in the plane, yeah, and I go to London. You no, can but just on when, the you get there, when you get there, pay your couple of... Ca go, when you get there, right... Go to the airport, get your free Wi-Fi at the airport and cache your maps. Oh, no, but also what they've said is if you go and you go through your route that you want to take here yeah. today, uh, before you fly, then it will be cached tomorrow. Thank you. There okay. We go. All right. So in the market is, yes. And I would look at it. only came through about a month ago. Yeah, but it's cool. No, you're talking about offline maps, basically. Yeah. Very neat feature. Hold on. Right? I've got to, um, we have to move along. I understand okay, that. Yes. But there's <laughs> a good question here. And, and, uh, come Kay. on. Uh, Wingspan asked about open... Open street map. Open street map. Open street map. Is that... 
Yeah. W- what is he saying? Is that um, something you can load into Google Maps? No, no. OpenStreetMap, there's a converter that'll take OpenStreetMap and convert it to the Garmin maps that your Garmin will read. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh. So you can do it. You there can you go, actually Wingspan. load them. Cool. You can load the OpenStreetMap's maps into your Garmin. And as that far as I rad. know, it's... Well, it's a bit of a hack. Yeah, sure. But and all the rest, and it's but it's fully routable and everything like that. It actually works quite well. Yeah. So more the specialized fields will probably still support the Garmin. Yeah. yeah. So if you go to OpenStreetMap.org uh, and you go dig around in the wiki and stuff, there's a whole tutorial on how to actually right. import it and all the rest. Yeah, I'm going to move this along now. <laughs> sorry. Wow, we lost. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I'm in 500 you meters, in, in turn direction. left. We, we, we've gone our major detour and we're now I'll coming I'll back on. Recalculating. <laughs> 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 All right. Having said that, uh, don't even wish to notice, the streaming from our site currently is now based in South Africa. And with that, one of the things we saw last week, and we're going to keep on going, is we're now streaming into PTA WUG. And if the uh, bandwidth is good enough, into JA WUG via PTA WUG. And I want to thank, uh, special thanks to Donny Haramse, because if he didn't organize a, a NanoBridge link into um, the LA high site, I don't think this would have been possible. He also helped out with quite of the QSs today, sorted out some of that. Oh, okay, cool. So thank you very much, Donny. Uh, appreciate it a lot, and uh, we hope to run the service 24-7 uh, into the WUG, and I'm happy. Yeah, this is, will be the first, I don't know, somebody challenge us. This is the first in the world. <laughs> Come on. Well, no, never mind challenges. If somebody's interested and wants to broadcast, it has to be your own content. Yes. We're yeah. not, uh, sorry, we're not interested if it's dodgy. Yeah. Uh, content, come chat to us and we can help you. Yes. Yeah, well, please, yeah. Because yeah, I see you guys have been playing re- re- repeats of the shows on, so yes. it's 24 hours and everything. Yeah, like we're going to try cool. and run it. Lots and of yeah. I'd love to, um, and they, I want to need help, but we need to do one school event. So one soccer game from a school into the wagon. <laughs> Just, just so just we can say see. we did it. Yeah. We'll, we'll do it online and then bounce the whole thing. Exactly. Yeah. Cool. All right. So if anybody's interested, please give us a shout. Um, all right. Okay. We, we've uh, Our reporter in studio wishes to Bet cut through mind. tech journalism. <laughs> Which wishes to vent a little. Um, y- yes, vent a little and it's sort of an appeal. I don't know if anybody's going to listen. Um, if anybody is listening to us, uh, even um, I know every like people on the RSC, yeah, um, uh, all every all, and, and all everybody has their own podcasts and stuff. So um, I don't know who listens to whom, um, but regardless. Um, I'm a fairly new entrant into the, the, the technology journalism space. I, I started at my broadband in May. I was an engineer for three years, and then I decided I needed a change. Um, so take this from whence it comes. It comes from somebody who's just come in and making some observations. And what I've noticed is that in South Africa, tech, uh, tech journalists, I can't speak for any other journalist, obviously, tech journalists um, are, are hyper-competitive, and that's a good thing, but cutthroat hyper-competitive. So, for instance, we don't link to one another, and, and I don't understand that at all, um, pu- between publications. So, um, and this happens in the gaming space as well. When one site breaks a story, um, uh, you know, the, the other site will do everything they can to just, get the, to just get their own quotes, get their own information, and run the story separately. Um, and that's cool. That's also g- a form of good journalism. Um, but sometimes it's, it's good enough to just republish the other people's story and provide a link Back to the source. You see this happening on Engadget, um, or at the very least, um, you know, you don't put this at the bottom. I, what I see CNET doing is they they write an article and they link back to the original article in the body of the article. Right. Yeah. This is fairly stock standard practice. Um, and in South Africa, I've noticed that um, never mind linking. I think linking is is step five. Step zero is let's mention one another for goodness sake in our articles. Um, I mean, it, it's actually it's actually like distressing that I mean people d- do anything they can to not mention the other publication in their articles, and it's ridiculous. I don't know where the bad blood comes from, um. but we are doing harm only to ourselves, only to our publications. We're not doing harm, uh, you know. In, we're not we're not uh, and providing an advantage to international guys. Um, it's our page ranks we're impacting. It's our traffic we're impacting. It's our credibility we're impacting. Um, it's just really bad. Look, I, I agree with you. I find this in a lot of things, but I think this is actually more South African trend. We, we're so busy worried that, you know, the other guy's going to get a bit ahead of us that we don't realize by doing a lot more working together, we can actually both do better. Yes. Um, and I see uh, in a lot of things, the guys are just 
so much. I want to get my stuff out. I want to make sure nobody sees you because if they see you, they're going to steal from me. But in a lot of these, especially like even see with the podcast to an extent, it's it's a emerging thing. A, whole, a lot of people don't even know about it. So the more people we can let down, the more we share, the more both sites are going to grow and get out there and improve South Africa. Um, so it's it's hopefully a trend we can start trying to change and fix. And <laughs> Oh, sorry, Johan, I, I have more to add, but no, I see no, that you want to talk. I understand 100% what you're saying, and I think that you're referring to specific incidents which we would understand because we've read one of the two sides of the story. Sure, so sure. We, we and don't I don't want to mention names at this stage. No, it is a general to. thing. No, it's a general thing, but um, Tim has made a good point. It's an emerging market, and unfortunately, if you want to make it in the market, you've got to be cutthroat. And, and I don't mind cutthroatness in general, but now let me, let me give an example, right? In journalism specifically, now the journalists are so hyper-competitive, we want the story first. And that's, that's a natural drive to have yeah. as a journalist. Okay, cool. But now companies can play that, can play us against one another. So for instance, certain, um, certain operators who will not be named, who might blacklist certain people, um, you know, uh, instead of standing in solidarity and going, Fine. You want to blacklist that journalist? I will string information to them and they will publish the story anyway. Even though it is at detriment to myself that I string that information through mm. um, and, and give them the story. Um, but it is, it is about getting the story out. It is about getting the story out quickly and it is about having, having, uh, not having us dictated to by companies. Not having us played against one another by companies. And that is the power. Journalists, um, one of the responsibilities of journalists is to dig for the truth when companies seek to hide it. Yeah. Um, and, and this happens often. Um, no, I, I, he's got a. You got an absolute valid point, and there's there's independent newspapers. I uh, have tried to actually do it and actually run stories that are independent, and um, it sounds like they're doing well, but their circulation's not picking up. Mm. So, yes, I hear what you're saying. It's it's you're right, but it's not even a case of you saying, um, you know, not you're not taking say. Publisher A publishes a news story, newspaper A. You're not just linking to their story and saying, oh, yeah, you don't, it's not that you're not doing your own work. It means publish, publisher A said something and this is what we found out. You're adding to the, the, the sure. story. body, they're yeah. adding to the story. But you don't even link to the original what publisher A said. You just say, uh, someone them. said this. A, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You don't okay. mention who All originally right. did the research. You don't know. It's the same. Have you ever. Okay, there's a few like PopSci and there's a few websites that actually link to the original articles. The vast majority of online, um, online technology will not link to the original research that they're writing about. Well, I see that my, is broadband, point. Yeah. my broadband started doing it. I saw really? I read a story today, uh, which was just a quick rewrite. It was slipping two paragraphs and you link back to a story that actually came from... ZDNet or something. Yeah, yeah we, we do. We, we've got a new section we've opened up called Quick News. Um, and, so uh, well and done. It was, you give me the summary, and if I want to read more, I can go back to the original site. It's well, well yeah. done. That's how it should be done. Cool. Should be done. Right. Anyway. I'm, I'm Moving right along. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, and, and, I, and I wanted to throw that in the middle so that we can yeah. get to the positive stuff cool. now. Yes. Uh, <laughs> something very really cool South Africa. Um, CECOM showed off a 500 gigabits per second power oh, link. As an engineer, that was, uh, that I, I was some was very sexified cool. technology. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Two pieces of fiber. Uh, that is, I don't know how many. One pieces send, of, one receive. I, I, I don't know how many yeah. pieces of fiber. Uh, well, no, it's one piece of fiber. One. That's the trick. It is one piece of fiber, and it is ten wavelengths. So they 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 set up ten wavelengths of fifty gigabits per second each. Pair them. They call it dual carrier. Yeah. And they pump hundred gigabits per second per wavelength. And, and one of the really cool things about this, and I, say, I did look in a bit more, which they used to do previously, is that they would actually have 10 separate lasers mm. and then feed them with, and basically Mirrors feed them into yeah. this thing. Yeah. This is 10 wavelengths coming off one chip. Unbelievable. It is. In, and into another chip on the other side. And, and they pump 50 gigabits per, per little, um, they, they showed the, spectrum. the yeah, the, and it's a, it was obviously like a Fourier transform is yes, what it looked yeah. like. So they showed the, the peaks yeah. that, that had certain channel spacing apart and you could go, and they said, that's 50, that's 50. And they had 10 okay. 50, 50s and then they had 10 10s. So they had 10 G, te they call it 10 G technology and then you have 40 G technology and now you have 100 G technology. So they had 10 10 G technology carriers and 10 100G technology carriers 
on the same thing. But they, they use dual carrier to get okay, 100G working. Okay, where's the catches? What's the distance? Is this something that Seacom could yeah. actually implement? They could do it now. Between yeah. us and... Um, yeah. yeah, but they, they would actually use this for their uh, Joburg to Tanzini link. So they would use this for their terrestrial backhaul rather than their undersea. Uh, undersea. undersea. And, and it is something if, apparently if, that they are doing. Yeah, no, but so if you read the article, though, they're going to be implementing this on the undersea cable for the upgrades. Yes. And, and so it is something. Come on, M Web! Please! It is something that they'll do when it makes sense. But it is something they'll do when it makes sense because the thing is, right now, the, the bandwidth's not so. Yeah, okay. exactly. I mean, okay. uh, we've got more than enough capacity um, undersea in the country. But what this shows is, uh, I mean, th there is actually, is it, there's almost no limit to the amount of bandwidth we've yes. got now on our undersea cable. So you go, okay, now um, let's say 100G technology is the ceiling, which it probably isn't. Right. Okay. Um, and now that's cool. Um, so you, you switch from 10G to 100G. You 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 multiply basically you multiply your capacity by five. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, not a full 10, probably five. Yeah. Cool. Now you're like, okay, now I've sold off that one fiber. Um, that's cool. Light up another. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. And since we are talking about this, we're going to need better ways to uh, use this bandwidth. And there's this rumors now going that telcoms must be finally going to be trying the. 20, 20 megabits and 40 megabits per second. ADSL, but yeah. we still won't get it in the poor flipping suburbs that's got ATM connection. I might, well, hopefully, I'll, I'm, we, I'm on. No, yeah, no, you don't stay here anymore. You stay somewhere else. <laughs> yeah. I must say, it's lovely. I've got, got the 10 megabits per second. And, and for uploading the shows, it's great. Mm. And if I can get more bandwidth up, I just would love it. S some, yeah, symmetric would be really cool. That's yeah. something. Um, uh, there are rumors that, um, but the thing is, it's all about financial feasibility, which yes. is unfortunate for those of us in the suburbs because um, the uptake just isn't high enough in this country yet. Um, and that's something they could have really fixed. But okay. let's not get into that discussion. But they are actually looking at rolling out like fiber closer to the home, as it were. Yes. Um, and then that immediately, because the, the big problem that, that we've got is copper length to the exchange. So, you know, even if your exchange supports it, if your run of copper from your house to the exchange is too long, no 10G, no 20G, no 40G for you, sorry. Okay. What's too long? I'd have to look that up. Yeah, it's, it's, short, it's on the hey? Wikipedia it's short. page. It's, uh, it's not even a K, I it's think. It's not even, it's 800 meters for the um, top for the, 40 The meg. problem in Centurion, which is where we broadcast from, and we would love gigabit. I felt, let's say it, the suburb high. is 10 years no, no, old. No, it's a whole of, okay, because I know yes. other guys who can't even get four meg lines in this suburb. Yeah, uh, people in, out in Gashfontein, same story, they have to sink at three. Um, from this side, from here, all the way through Centurion is one kilometer, through the whole of Arfeld. Yep. Copper, yeah, here copper is not the issue. Here back all this, they, they yeah. need to put Ethernet in that exchange. And then the fact that this is a high-tech suburb, there's a lot of young people here, don't tell me that they haven't saturated on the ADSL I don't cells. know what the excuse is for not no, upgrading this exchange, pathetic. to be yeah. completely honest. Well, I know they've case, saturated it's because like, I have a friend who's trying to get a, a fast line, just can't get it. Any case, anyway. Yeah, there's our my rant. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Talcom, <laughs> why were you upgrading the people for 20 and 40? Yes, Good for sort out well the rest. Do it. Please give us uh, 10 megabits per second. Yeah, we will use it. I promise. Yeah. promise. Or risk having LTE kill you. I'm just going to put that right out there. Wireless is not a solution. Sorry, I'm on the way. I agree with you completely. As long as they can break, well, the cost, of course, but yeah. And, but latency is going to be a problem. Yeah. <laughs> LTE's latency is incredibly good. Yeah, I've tested it. It's incredibly good. I was playing a, a game of Starcraft people, latency on that. is an issue. For the vast majority of people, latency is not an issue. Yeah, but you see, I'm thinking about we want to broadcast the show. You We're a special work. use case. Your mom and pop, what do they yeah. want? YouTube videos, maybe a video chat with the kids at, in, another, in another city. And you know what? You can live with. 100 milliseconds of, of yeah. latency on it. And, and with LTE, that's not where your latency will come from. I mean, your wireless barrier does add a bit of latency. You know, it's not the, yeah. you know, sub 10 milliseconds that we have to the router here. Yeah. Um, you know, it'll be in the tens of milliseconds. But y it, your majority of latency will st internationally will still yeah. be from your international And yes, gaming. But you know what? The amount of gaming that happens in South Africa, you're connecting to European servers anyway. Where's your latency on those links? Okay, out. but now you're adding the local you add latency la on you top add, of that. Then you know what? Then you can go get, if you're such a hardcore gamer that the latency makes a difference to you, then you can go get add yourself. Plug right yeah. into WAX. That apparently they're going to get a, a dedicated <laughs> a dedicated set of fibers <laughs> cool. to the UK. <laughs> right. Anyway, yeah. into uh, the, the possible solution for, for the WUG. Yeah. Um, I see they've ratified or busy ratifying a new uh, Senate. 802.22. Yeah. That is correct. Coming um, in, what is this? It's, yeah, a, it's 
my main worry is it's using white space spectrum in America. So whether we will actually if they get it, might be a different story. Because you know about the white space spectrum. Yes. Okay. No, this is something apparently uh, uh, Peter Ice was pushing pushing for it as well. Uh, no, and, P- and Peter Ace wants t- it to be uh, auction or so Vodacom can buy. No, no, no. Um, he was talking about, you were talking about white space, which is something the government basically administers it. Government rolls out network. You buy, you buy space or you buy capacity from then like, like you'd buy capacity from CCOMF, right? What I understand is a uh, part of the white space in America is supposed to be allocated like the Wi-Fi spectrum, uh, well, the uh, 82 one that we can use for free. Okay. No, white spe- no, no, hold on. The white space is in the TV spectrums. Yes. It's because of the le- it's the leftovers from, you know, it's now that they're moving to digital, et cetera. So that, oh, that area. Yes. That's that only going to get go, that's only going to get when the digital migration is exactly. done. No, so this country it's 2015. Th- this country yeah. is going to take a while, but in America, they're really looking at these standards. Yeah, but remember, this is, this is just okay. announced the standard. They haven't even, they haven't even, you can't even get by devices yeah, for it. Just come back. I mean, okay, so the frequency is one issue, but what else does it do? Um, it should give you uh, extremely long range. 1,000, extremely lower, long range. 12,000 square okay. miles per base station. Yeah. What? what? <laughs> I, I think they worked it down. I think it's 64 kilometer radius. Yeah. But you can have such a. Yeah, and it, it, it's not and it's not terribly high performance, twenty two megabits a second, but extremely no. large areas. But you can okay. do twenty megabits per second for sixty four Ks. Yes. And but h- how does how's that capacity impacted by the more users you've got on that cell? Well that's now the challenges. That's uh, gonna, yes, it's, gonna yeah. it's gonna be directly like any Wi Fi network. It's gonna yeah. come down. Yeah. But I understand the excitement about yes. range. I mean if you could travel with your, your mobile device and stay on the same AP yeah. Access point for 64 kilometers. It, it, the other way I'm looking at this, if you take all the WUG high sites we have now, we've covered the whole of Pretoria, and you could get WUG signal wherever you were. We need one high site. I'm just trying to check what the I'm trying to just check what the the output powers have to be. Uh, to yeah, ranges. exactly, because that's that's the first um, question I asked when I saw this as well. I'm like, 64k is shana na, but you're gonna have to get an IECNS license in order no, to get this work it's to work. Because it's in the low frequency, so they travel better. Yes, it does, okay. but you're still gonna have to output the certain amount of power. Cool. And it will be relatively high. Yeah, because the, what worries me is obviously the the way that the WUG uh, works on paper is that um, yeah. we don't we don't broadcast. Um, above what? It, what's the limit? Is it is it a milliwatt? Is it a no, watt? No, no, it's, it's ten no. milli ten or no, it's one twenty watt. one watt. It's yeah, one yeah. watt, one one or two watts within the within the the, yeah. the legal ranges of the Wi-Fi equipment we use. Yes. Yeah. Anyway, problems with uh, having long ranges like this, right, for mobile devices, is it's going to kill your battery. Well, yeah. the device can't talk back. You you can talk back. Of course, you would be able. You'd have to be able to talk back, but. Yes, but your battery, your battery is going, is going to be. Yeah. That's why with cell phones you want as short a range as possible, just yeah. for battery life. This, I wouldn't imagine this being used so much for cell phone. It'd be more for the, the WUG concept, and it's more that you need fewer <coughs> towers. Yeah, no, true. Look, I do. Well done. This is obviously it's interesting. It's an interesting. It's very interesting. interesting. Yeah. I've posted the the Wikipedia article about it and things like that. There's a little bit more detail. Um, and just on just it, more. Okay, sixty four. What sixty four? Sixty four kilometers. Square. Radius. Radius. Oh. Yeah, then you have to pi R squared that. So it's big. Okay. It's huge. That's huge. I mean, yeah, hold on, hold on. It's not going to work. Because when you reach 40 kilometers, your curvature of the earth is so much that you need to go up so many kilometers. But remember, I mean, your TV reception works at that range. Because it actually penetrates. Yeah, it's, it's, mm. it's, it's interesting. Very cool. interesting. And Very you'll have reflections and stuff. Anyway, yeah. look, if they do it, cool. Uh, I'll be quite excited. It's quite an interesting it's technology. Mm. Have a I'm going to be watching Here's it. a good question. How big will the transmitter be? I can't find, an, I can't <laughs> find a, a, a <laughs> power <laughs> output here. I think they're still working <laughs> on the standards. <laughs> and, and this is what you'll see as well. With LTE, for instance, the first trials we saw, um, if the camera can be on me, your modem was as big as a dial-up modem. Yeah. Right um, now, it's as big as a USB stick. Still, you'll yeah. know this answer. You know what's the direct problem when you're going down in frequency? Your antenna gets longer. Yes, it does definitely. Yeah. So yeah, it's a very <coughs> good thing that we're actually going down. But as you go down in frequency, your antenna gets longer because yeah. you get to get the very wave carrier. So that's going to be interesting to see how they turn around that. Yeah. No, it's going to be interesting to see, but yeah. Cool. And anyway. might do some funky stuff with ceramic antennas and yeah, dipoles and all move sorts of stuff. On yeah. a bit, sorry. <laughs> yeah. sorry. As, r- as riveting as antenna <laughs> design is <laughs> for everybody. <laughs> Look, antenna design is really cool. It's a black art, but it's scary. It's not. It is. It's it right is. up there anyway. with 
Phase lock loops. It's anyway, no. yeah. <laughs> get, we'll come back into this. I saw an interesting video about phase lock loops. I'll send you okay. the link. Okay, something <laughs> exciting that's going to be happening, and I'm very excited. And, and why is it not in the calendar? Nokia N9 has been confirmed for South Africa. Why would you want a Nokia? Because it's, it's a Mego. Why would you want a Nokia? It's Linux. Migo, why would you want to ah, knock here? <laughs> yeah, he's from the person who keeps on offering me a Windows CD. <laughs> <laughs> I like Linux. Tell us about this new phone. It's uh, pretty funky looking, hey? Yeah, I like cool. the no, no button on the front face. Yeah. That. Okay, you've not told me design. nothing. What's the size? Is it a 4.3 yeah. inch? It's, it's going to 4.3 inch. Yes. It's, it looks like it's going to be a Nokia N8 full screen device, though. Okay. Um, so it's got the same sort of design, you know, the angled the angled corners, and then full screen, no button. Do yourself a favor, go look at the picture quickly on it. Then you'll see. Well, she's going to bring it up for us. Our mixer that will not be named. Yes. She's just looking for it. But okay, so keep on going. I mean, okay, so it's... Yeah, and here, here it is. Um, is this not the one that uh, Carrot so very kindly for us reviewed last no, week? No, that's E6. Which running. you can also find on the LT Network yes. uh, channel. So and please go same, and look at that. At the same time, apparently, you also reviewed I tried. <laughs> I tried to see how that... <laughs> but in any case, it's not the same phone that he reviewed. is. No, no, no. This one isn't out yet. I don't think it's out anywhere in no. the world. In fact, the, the launch date has not been announced. Um, okay, second question. Um, if, if, okay, so this is going to run a Linux version, which Android is. Yeah. Yes. To your point, but this is going to be more Will Linux. Will they actually allow you to this is like format it? Yes. It's Debian, man. You and can you, go you get flip and transmission on it and install a bit. So no client. routing around. Nah, I don't know what you it is. We'll see when it gets launched. We'll see when it gets launched. But at, at that state, you, you don't know what they're going to do with the With the old MAMO stuff, you, the old, what was it, the N? I just feel like Nokia's always been no, a no. solid manufacturer of phones. Solid. You could, if you wanted to give your parents a phone that they won't break, and I've done you it. You don't I've, give them this one. You give them Nokia, all right? Now, they're starting to muck around, and uh, I'm sorry. I no, look, I must say, my main concern with this one is they've sort of peeling away from it. But I, I want another competitor to Android and uh, Apple. Look, no, but Stephen Elop has uh, has made this stillborn now. Um, yes, uh, and, and it's unfortunate because I don't think Migo was given nearly the lease on life it deserved. So with Nokia siding with Windows Phone for its high end, Migo might be because what was going to happen was Symbian was going to be relegated to their sort of uh, mid, you know, not mid range, but their lower end smartphones. Um, with Migo on the high end, now it looks like Symbian is going to be relegated to their feature phones. Migo will maybe get in on the mid end, and um, and they're going to use Windows Phone on the high end. I'm going to check this phone out. If it's good enough, I think I'll get it. I'm lo I'm looking forward to it. I, yeah. I definitely want to see and what this baby can do. Buy it? Maybe Migo will it not be still bone. Yeah. Okay. I'm just, I, I'm, I, it's I'm, I'm negatively optimistic. No wrong words. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm not negative. optimistic. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, skeptical. Yeah, it's skeptical it's, is the word. Yes. I'll wait to see the the review on uh, yeah. the Let's Talk Network. But uh, it's a funky, um, funky show. looking phone. But anyway. by the way, Nokia, I will review this phone and I will use it, please. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe right. this is the phone that brings me back to Nokia. I don't know. Right. Cool. I like Nokia. Um, Somebody entered a 3D printing the world's first printed plate. That was me. Would you like to tell us about it? You can, I will do. Right. It is a fully 3D. We, we love 3D, 3D printers here. We do. Okay. And this is not homemade 3D printers. This is relatively high tech uh, nylon printers that are going to cost you probably three quarters of a million bucks type printers. Okay. So it's, it's you know, relatively high tech stuff. But it was a project uh, with the... Um, Oh, flip now, I've lost it. University of Southampton. Yes. And part of their... This is how screwed up their education overseas is. They have a UAV course as part of their engineering degrees. UAV, sorry. Unmanned aerial vehicles. And part of their project, what, uh, their, school, their varsity project was build a UAV for class. Basically build a Very remote cool. control airplane. Build a robot airplane for us. Okay, First year, second year, please. No, this is final year okay, okay. okay. stuff. But anyway, <laughs> yeah. or, 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 sort of failed. or post grads <laughs> and <laughs> post grads. But anyway, okay. these guys came up and it's 3D printed. The whole thing is 3D printed, except of course the motor and the electronics. But the airframe and everything okay. is 3D so, printed. So they did the drawings, did the drawings, fed the drawings into into a machine. Come back the next day and your plane is waiting to fit a motor into. So. Potentially, they could take that whole concept and go to mass. Yes, but well, it wouldn't be mass. What they were looking at it more <coughs> is ultimate customization. Well, I was thinking even better. Let's say you now you do your Incredible. test design. It doesn't work. 
That's one what day I'm later saying. you have your next one. Exactly. So you don't like the wing design. Is a, you get a bit of uh, resonance fluttering on the wing. No problem. We'll just crank out another wing. Tomorrow we fly it again with a mm. new wing. This is the strength of 3D printing. <laughs> is, is it's okay. being used you for see, rapid prototyping. 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 Yeah. Rapid okay. prototyping. Rapid prototyping. That is interesting. Yeah. And um, how did they score? Uh, it was. Did they uh, pass or did they get? No, on? no. <laughs> <laughs> but they've got some interesting things with the with the. Some really clever design thing that they had to. Of course, you have to walk work around the printer's um, geometry that it can print and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Well, it, so it looks like the wingspan is actually hollow. So yes, I mean, yes, how do you yeah. print a hollow? You well, got, that's the thing. So you got to probably print the upper and lower and have and to glue it together and that sort or, of stuff. So there must be like limitations. That. You could do that with what they call filler material, but then the problem is, how do you get the filler out? Yes, problems like that. So yeah. it was interesting. It's an interesting design challenge. Well oh. done. And I it's mean, very cool. Check it out. So what, I mean, what have been, it would have been the whole software around designing the model and then interpretate or, or yeah, feeding so that. You, what you could do is you could design this completely in CAD. I'm, no, I'm trying to figure yeah. out what was the submission for the oh, for It was project. the UAV as far as I understood. It was the whole, pr it was the process of building, of building a the UAV. UAV. Yeah. Incredible. And um, it, I, I think the total budget was 5,000 pounds. Yeah, 5,000 pounds. Did they print that thing in 3D for under 5,000 pounds? Yeah, the whole, the whole budget was that. I, I think, that of course, the school had... Yeah, that's incredible. They either had access to these uh, high-end 3D okay, printers okay. or the, the school had them, they, okay. their school. So okay. the problem with the 3D printers is still the material costs are ridiculously expensive. Remember, I mean, yes. it's like, it's it's like printer funny, cartridges. Yeah, it's you a know, funny... The actual ink in the printer cartridges is worth cents, but they'll sell it for 400 bucks. Okay. Um, I know with one type of pr one printer I've worked with is an object. They call it an object printer. I'm mm -hmm. trying to think who makes it now. And for one kilo of nylon, or it's nylon or ABS, sorry, it's ABS plastic. One kilo of ABS plastic is four thousand rand. Sure. And the yeah. plastic itself is worth nothing. Nothing, absolutely yes. nothing. It's just the box that it comes in. The cartridge has got a chip in it, and the printer will not print if you don't have the correct thing it's got DR drm on the on the on the on the cartridge and it's four grand a pop yes well <laughs> they have to make the money somewhere we're just waiting for the open source printers to really start making a become feasible for more home users and then we yeah you know, this is a little bit away because they needed relatively high accuracy and high strength and and yeah, things like that but said, hey 10 years from now 20 years oh from yeah now. No. But have a look at it. It's quite interesting. It's quite interesting. But their whole thing was ultimate, ultimate um, flexibility on design. You know, you yes. can take straight from CAD drawings to design to a finished air aircraft, basically, in a very short Be period printing of time. Printing it. Exactly. Yeah, that's incredible. Yeah. Cool. Incredible. All right. Um, Africa, Web Africa enters uncapped hosting frame. Is this uh, now a force from MWeb? Yes. I think so. Yeah, definitely. I think they were losing or too many people. Web Africa, aren't they a traditional bandwidth reseller? No, Web Africa has been hosting, been quite have been, been, yeah, uh, offering hosting for quite some time. Okay, but my question is, aren't they a servicer reseller? Aren't they selling on services that they buy or they got their own? No, no, the retail. Web Africa, Web Africa. They uh, got their own server farm <laughs> where they will be hosting from. Um, I honestly don't know. I haven't used their hosting before. Um yeah, so I'm not sure. Look, it because, I mean, even Hetzner, one of them. Yeah, even Hetzner doesn't host, I mean, they host their own stuff, sort of, but in the MTN business data center. None of these guys operate their own data centers. Or anything. Like does. everybody, say again? Emweb does? does? Yes, no. okay, but Emweb no. is okay. massive. Let me rephrase my question. Web Africa has traditionally been buying bandwidth from other providers and on selling it. So they've been buying in bulk and on selling it. Yes. Now, if they're entering the hosting environment, aren't they they're actually not entering. just. They're This no, is just a new product. Been in, they've just dropped the pricing and they've now got an un kept offering isn't this like hosting actually on the hetzner servers that they're now gonna no no i'm fairly sure they've got their own infrastructure well not their own but they 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 don't they don't rent from uh, another retailer if that makes sense that that's more it's like aren't they just maybe taking the product from from mweb and actually on selling it and they've went and put a rack down at mweb and they're doing hosting from that rack and they're no, selling no it. it's not as far as i know look they had they had racks before so basically they've taken their products and they now just they've added uncapped options into it um, and it starts at about 19 Rand per month, which is what I think MWeb have for their uncapped local hosting. Also, for 50 megabytes that you – so you get for free with your ADSL. That's the thing, yeah. You get it for free. Oh, if, if, you, if you don't have ADSL, I think it's 19 Rand a month. Oh, 19. 19 Rand I heard 90. I'm going – um, And then they've got a one for 40 Rand roughly, which is 250 megabytes per month. And then it goes up to a 5 gigabyte for 400 Rand. 
If you're going to get the 400 Rand one, I'll just say go with MWIP and pay 600 Rand and get a whole server. Oh, one server. terabyte. Yeah. Well, two 500s, and if you can't get the mirror to work, <laughs> which oh, I tried for the whole day, <laughs> and then <laughs> you just. Uh, uh, we have subsequently found that together. there's a bug in the Ubuntu installer. Yes. That gives grief. Yes, I know. Uh, ah. I found that as well. Yeah. yeah. Eventually, we, we, we just gave up and we did it on one disc. Don't worry. That's, so. yeah. <laughs> I tried. I tried my best and I showed him some new tricks about installing them into. And yes, eventually just said, you know what? Just get it installed. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Um, all right. And then we could have mentioned, well, yeah. happy sad news. Yeah. Uh, Stu is going to be moving to Cape Town. Yeah, I'm off to Cape Town. Do you want to tell us why, though? Which is very I cool. Am going to, I'm going to go work for Amazon at the EC2 uh, dev group. Which development group? Development group, yeah. Running from Cape Town. Yep. Yes, yes, has been all this time. Yep. Why? I mean, is Amazon then actually? Nope, they've got nothing in Cape Town. They don't sell anything to South Africa. Yes, but they got one of their development centers is in Cape Town, and they, that development center it built originally designed and de invented whatever you want to call it the EC2 product. So yes. South Africa is responsible for, for Reddit. EC2. Yeah. Well, that's very and interesting. Now, um, what, what sort of development are you talking about? What is the EC2 product? I thought it was a hosting environment. It's well, it is, but it's, it is, but it's the entire infrastructure b behind that. So it's from the file system design. How do you, sp you know, from, you know, kernel management and how do you okay. launch I, millions of instances on the grid and things like that? Can I come back? Is yeah. the EC2 product then a virtual machine or is it a virtual service? Well, the EC2 product l allows you to install a virtual machine, basically, to, to buy a virtual machine or, okay. or, or compute time on a grid. And you can then install whatever OS you would like. I think there's Linux and Windows yeah, and okay. whatever. Okay. And then it runs as a VPS, virtual private server. Okay. Yes. And, you, and you're going to be part of the development team that's going to be managing the, the, the underlying... Well, it's the whole, yeah, the whole infrastructure on new products. So they're not and using VMware? Not they're not using VMware. No. No, they're using That's they're using Zen. I'm, I must okay. say what, what they're doing. I've, I've used the service of it. It's awesome what what you can. Yeah, do. Yeah, it's interesting. It's not. It's it's that elastic. So it's it's scalable computing. So as your as your instance, I think they call it a raindrop. Or I can't remember. But that as your you'll find out. In yeah, I'll find out soon <laughs> enough. Soon. But as they as they as your instance becomes loaded, you can elastically scale it up to thousands of new instances on the fly and things you, like you that. It's very very powerful your about image that. And sort of go stuff. another one, another one, another one, another one. It just okay. Now, yeah. re reading reading the Reddit developer blog um, when when stuff goes wonky, you know, like they they deal with a, an influx of traffic or something just goes wrong. Um, I mean, it, uh, the, they they had a, a lot of power. Um, with with EC2 to be able to just spin up a new instance yeah. and and move load over onto it. Um, I, I know that there has been issues lately, um, you know that have that have impacted. Uh, yeah, they've had the they've massive had downtime. They've had issues with their uh, what's it e elastic block cloud uh, elastic block store. Yeah, e yeah. Uh, So that's their block storage system. It, it affected okay. Dropbox and yeah. Reddit. Without, I think I it mean, affected a lot of people, I believe. But yes, um, I'll. Uh, my other suspicion is that Netflix runs off Amazon. Uh, but <laughs> I have no confirmation. It's just the way that you look at the network. Well, congratulations. Thank you very I much. Mean, mm, good yeah. luck. Congrats. Yeah, Jeez. it's going to be exciting. We're going to be Skyping him in. Uh, he's going to be away for probably a couple of weeks at least until I settle in and get internet and all the rest. Sorted. Well, it's not that. You got your passport. My passport? Yeah, you're moving out of the Joburg. I yeah. Mean, <laughs> <laughs> you need a passport to go that, to yeah. that side of the world. Well, more like moving into Cape Town. And, yes, and well, no, no matter what they say, it doesn't, it doesn't help watching the, 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 the mountain. For direction, <laughs> whoever tells uh, the only Cape Townians that say, "Oh, just look at the mountain. mountain. He'll know where you are." Yeah. Well, there's a mountain. Where the hell am I? <laughs> yeah. I know where the mountain is. <laughs> well, it's <laughs> like drive towards the mountain, away from the mountain. Turn. Well, a mountain it, has got four sides. I'm trying to think what's the saying from Winnie the Pooh. I know exactly where I am. Just where everything else is is a problem. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> good luck. <laughs> Thank good you very much. So I'm quite looking forward to it. It's going to be good fun. So. Hmm. And uh, please don't ever say we're going to Skype him in. What? We will find an alternative product to the product that was bought by Microsoft. <laughs> <laughs> we will Skype in until we find a better well, solution. Huddle, you know we can huddle do? has video no, chat. No, no, we go. can set up a, we can, or that, or we could just set up an asterisk server. We do video over that. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Thank you. That actually yeah. might be cooler too. On MWeb. Uh, I've got so many people on there. Well, well, you, maybe I'll install an asterisk box on one of the instances. One of the instances there you and we go. can test cool. on that. Oh, look, there's <laughs> other ways. You can even possibly bounce it off our streaming server. Yeah. Yeah.
this yeah. way of doing that. But anyway, we'll, we'll chat about that yeah, later. No, that'll be good right, fun. Uh, last three topics to go into quickly. Um, Our kickers. It's basically a study compares IQ with browser choice. <laughs> Oh, Sorry, and it was it. found to be, and it was found to be a hoax. Apparently, oh, was it? Yeah, I saw the BBC article earlier today. Um, I'll uh, I'll investigate that further and maybe do an article on it tomorrow. <laughs> All right. I, I like you, your. I like. Sorry, I actually didn't hear what you said. Just say Sorry. it again. A study compares the IQ with browser choice. <laughs> I love that. The best part was. And if I've got all four the I, the uh, browsers, IE was worse. Yes. <laughs> if I've got all four the browsers, I've got Safari, Firefox. Chrome and IE. Well, you take you take the lowest and you divide it by the number of browsers you've got, and that's your IQ. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but but, but correla correlation is not causation. causation. Uh, that's what the, I was going to come to. The best part yeah. of the article was the XKCD comic about yes. correlation does not equal causation. <laughs> uh, I had to run that by our editor, but uh, he said uh, it's cool in this particular instance, but uh, we can't put an XKCD in everything. And I'm like, oh, it's sad because there's an XKCD for everything. <laughs> <laughs> uh, having said this, uh, as long as you link back to it, your digital post. Which I did. If you click my XKCD comic um, in my article, it'll take you back to XKCD. Whichever one is the most common browser is is almost naturally going to be the lowest. Just because of large numbers. And, gonna and that definitely lead. came out in, in the comments, um, uh, in, in our forum rather. Yeah. Um, and what w another thing, that and what I thought should have signaled that this was treading in, into hoax territory, BS territory. W was that in the study I've got it in my downloads folder somewhere in the study they said um, that uh, this is something that has troubled sysadmins or IT uh, professionals for some time and we think we've answered that question that is mm. such a broad sweeping statement that it yeah. it, it it yeah. must well, be a joke. Well, my main thing is they said opera was the highest. And it was like No, no, not not opera. No, yes, no, no. Opera, opera was opera one. Opera was the highest. Yeah. Oh, and it, to graph. me it was just like Wait, yeah. wait. All, wait. All the really bright people know using which, Chrome. <laughs> which which version of Opera? Because you don't say. Because if you could actually make the things view any website, you're brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> the, the new opera the new opera stuff. That's is why I'm asking which good. version. No, 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 no. I, I like opera, it just it's not as well used as a couple other ones. And then, did they cover any mobiles? Who? Oh. Sorry about that. Oh, talking about that. Skype. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Did, um, did they mention any mobile browsers? Because no. people have got to seriously start looking at that ins information. I mean, yeah. mobile, mobile browsers are definitely penetrating the market. But mobile browsers <coughs> are kept up to date by the manufacturers, more or less. I mean, Android's a problem with the, with the issue of fragmentation. Um, you know, Android 1.6 still has the old default Android browser installed, mm -hmm. I think. I don't know if the silent Your updates. Your browser get doesn't update. Think it about it. Your Gmail updates. It's browser. not an app don't, list. No, it's not an app yet. Yet. Yeah. You think they're going to make it an app? Yeah. Well, because be it's great. something that obviously gets updated with the firmware. Yeah. With the firmware yeah. I still want them to support the audio codex in HTML5, which they don't. And it's irritating because my game doesn't work properly. Oh. <laughs> Your Om Nom Nom game. Yes. Then you also want dual core pro phones. Uh. What do you mean dual core? I want quad core. <laughs> that Nokia, was it a single core? Yeah. It single core, one gigahertz. Then the you, you made the comment yeah. about it, the stillborn? No. Nah. Yeah. Yeah. I, th I think they try. Yeah. Me go, not the phone. But anyway. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> do you want to call Batman? This is really. I want to call what? Batman. Do you want to call Batman? Yes. What well, kind of question is that? It, okay. Well, the only way to call Batman is to do the light. Well, if you do, I ha I have an equation for that. <laughs> this is so cool. What? This is really cool. <laughs> okay, let's go. It's quite right cool. It's a it's a, what, a piecewise polar equation as far as a piece stepwise polar equation. But I looked at the equation and it wasn't piecewise. I there was it was just separated by pluses and minuses. That's what impressed me so much. Oh, unbelievable. Uh, some guys are doing the equation. Read it. Sorry. <laughs> when you plot it, it plots the Batman side. Um, uh, we, we've actually threatened to feed that thing into Wolfram Alpha. I definitely want to try. Ma you that should. would be a, that would be a, uh, uh, it's a little bit long, so it might be a. You guys are running over me. You want to feed it into what? <laughs> Wolfram Alpha. What's Wolfram Alpha? It's a computational intelligence like engine. search engine. Yeah. yeah. So you can do, uh, you can go to wolframalpha.com yeah. and type in. X how many squared. people? Oh, how many people in, in the, the, Germany? Yeah, how many people? How many males in Germany? Or we will X put squared. that link into the show notes, yeah. and yeah. it'll just plot. It's really handy. Wolfram Alpha. Alpha. I haven't actually used mobile the mobile app. That it, sounds it, cool. It actually is really, really scarily good because I was trying to think it work. What we had to do, and we had to we had to simplify some equations. And we just fed the raw equations into Wolfram Alpha, and you look for the derived. It, it does a simplification for you. It 
is correct. And it's done by the people who wrote... Mathematica, isn't Mathematica. it? Mathematica. No, not Mathematica. What? The other one. It's not MATLAB. Oh, I thought it was MATLAB. No, no it's Mathematica. Oh, Mathematica. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Just how far we... I still got time. What, one more. But Linux have got some graphing software. Which GNU can plot. take GNU plot and then uh, Octave. Octave. Which yeah. is uh, a MATLAB clone. That does not work. Yeah, you could probably yeah, feed. You, could, if you, you could probably feed this in. Yeah. You yeah. could try. So, if anybody in the chat room would like to try and retype that equation, Quickly. you've got <laughs> one minute. <laughs> <laughs> All right, into our final uh, topic. Uh, if anybody here is also a, a fan of Game of Thrones, like I am, um, they've gone and done some and showed you how they actually do some of the special effects for the Game of Thrones, like the green screens and building up the castles. Chroma key. Chroma key. Yes. Yeah, obviously there was a blue one as well. Um, it's incredible how they're actually doing. You actually go, and and it's amazing what they added. Like the castle, it's not there. Like the king walks into Winterfell. Um, so there's a lot of spoilers as well. So if you don't want Game of Thrones spoiled for you, don't watch this video. Um, but it's amazing. Like the king walks into Winterfell, and there's no Winterfell. Winterfell is not there. <laughs> or also what I like to grow, there's a bit where you know they come they need to grow over a river not giving anything away there and there's a big castle on there and then they actually sh show you the shot before I don't think you there should show no anything from the video I'll mix it I don't think you should show anything from the video please it doesn't actually give too much but it's, it's no, awesome it's the, anyway. the end is given cool. away unfortunately Spoilers. so right. so if you can you, yeah just be careful and with that that's our show yeah just want to thank everyone for listening I want to mention the fact that we've got Let's talk of Afrikaans tomorrow night. So, can I have a can I have a yeah. request for next week's show? You can, can we have a can we have a pick of the week? Cool. Because I think we should pick books that you the last books you've read. Okay. Okay. Books. Cool. 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 Because I've read a really freaking. I'm busy reading a really really good one, and I'll be finished with it next week. So. Cool. Cool. That yeah, sounds good. Definitely. Okay. Seeing that the only books I read I can't talk about on this show. You, audio um, books are allowed. Audio books are allowed. Oh, okay. okay well, you. yeah. We'll 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 okay. save for you, hun. Audio books are thank are allowed. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and you, yeah. I, I always find that funny with a friend of mine, Morris. He always he loves his audio books. He's like, oh no, I read this book. You know, audio. I'm like, dude, it's not reading. <laughs> <laughs> but. <laughs> Cool. <laughs> All right. Um, as I said, Altio Frequence tomorrow. Uh, Let's Talk Sport is live already on YouTube and all the rest of it. Um, if you enjoy the show and all the rest of it, please let other people know about us. Um, like yeah, our this Facebook is not page. You know, give us, send us an email, tell us what you liked or even what you don't like, what, what should we do. Um, you can find us on Facebook under Let's Talk Network and Let's Talk Geek. Uh, please, we'd love to hear from you guys. Yeah. Oh. And you can email us. <laughs> I love this part. You can email us at anything you like <laughs> at let's, let's talk, talk network. Network. We're still TV. running a competition for the most creative email address. Yes, absolutely. We spoke about this about. Yeah, maybe we should formalize two it. Two months, we've got, two we've months got, we're ago. Gonna give those, we're going to give the, one of those dev boards away. Yeah, we can give a couple away. Because I'll, I'll throw in one of the touch sensors for that thing. Oh, cool. So I'll throw in a touch, only one, because I'm unfortunately using the other two. But yeah. I'll throw in one touch sensor if you want. Cool, we can do cool. that. So we'll, anything we'll, we'll set it up for next week. Yes, yeah, we'll set it up for next week and we'll launch it next week. Cool. Here we go. All right, thank you for everyone for listening. Cheers. Thank you very much. Cheers. Cool, cheers. cheers.